My name is Ilya Tovas. I'm the Artistic and Managing Director of J by J. I hope that you've already had a chance to watch uh, Pablo Lungan's film. If you have not, J by J continues uh, through uh, until Thursday, and so you have a chance to catch Esau anytime between now and Thursday, but again, hopefully for the discussion, uh, you will already have watched and have questions prepared as well. I'm joined, of course, by a director who I'll introduce shortly, as well as um, an interpreter, Lily Olm, who will be occasionally interpreting in French uh, if uh, needed, but uh, Pavel's English is, is quite good, and especially if I can oh. make myself speak slower, uh, then I think at times we won't need Lily, and at times we will, so she'll kind of pop in and out. Um, let me give just a little bit of a bio on Pavel, who is quite an accomplished uh, filmmaker, and then we'll jump into the conversation. Uh, Pavel started out um, as a screenwriter and directed his first breakout feature, Taxi Blues, in 1990, where he was awarded for the Best Director Prize at the Cannes Film Festival. In the two decades that followed, he directed over a dozen films, both in French and in Russian. Uh, some of the highlights include Luna Park and The Wedding, which were also shown at the Cannes Film Festival and nominated for the Golden Palm. His film, The Island, was the closing film of the Venice Film Festival. In 2009, SAR was an official selection um, at the Uncertain Regards section in Cannes. And uh, lastly, though I'm certainly not covering all of his work, Queen of Spades won the Audience Award at the Tallinn Black Knights Film Festival, which is uh, quite recognized as well. Uh, Pavel, thank you for joining us and welcome to J by J. Thank you. I am with you. Excellent. Um, and then one last housekeeping note before we get in. Uh, people are viewing this Q&A in two different platforms. Do not worry if you're on one or the other. It's exactly the same Q&A, uh, with the only difference being slightly how you ask questions. So in both of them, um, you will ask questions by typing them in. If you're viewing this through Zoom, uh, there's two ways to do it, and we ask that you only use one of them. Please only use the Q&A function. Submit your questions. You can begin submitting them now or submit them later on. It's okay. I'll incorporate them as we go. Or if you're watching through our online platform, Eventive, there's only one chat function, chat them in there, and I'll try to get to those questions as well. Um, so to start off, um, you've put together, uh, Pavel, a very ambitious project here uh, in so many ways, both in terms of the story and in terms of the film, of course, based on the biblical story and also modernizing it. Uh, can you share with us what first interested you in the subject matter and also in Meir Shalev's book, which acts as the source material. Uh, look, you know, first of all, uh, with age, you became more and more Jewish. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I think that everybody uh, 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 has, and when, uh, when you became Jewish and you feel something uh, profoundly new in you, uh, you know, because I, I didn't have, I, I, I never had a religious education. I was educated in Soviet Union where there was no church, no synagogue, no, no, no rabbi, no Yiddish, nothing. It was just Russian culture. And, uh, and at the same time, you know, uh, we were really separated from this, uh, from uh, the big and great Jewish culture, culture of thinking, culture of joking, culture of, you know what. And uh, in the books of Meir Shalev, you know, I've, I did find, uh, how can I tell it? Uh, you know, uh, you know, the, there is two icon of uh, Jewish films. One is noble old Jewish man with beard and smiling uh, entering into the uh, Auschwitz camp. You know, and everybody is crying. It's true, uh, and uh, a new uh, Israeli fascist. Jew with, uh, you know, with, with, um, uh, uh, with a machine gun oppressing Arabs. I just wanted, uh, I just tried to want what is inside, what is inside this Jewishness, what is the family, what is all this hate and love relation of family, all this, you know, this very intensive 
life of uh, 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 being Jewish. I did find it in Mir Shalev's book and with, it, with his mythological irony. So I did it. Great, thank you. Uh, before we get into the plot, and I already see questions coming in from the audience about the, the plot, um, I wanted to talk about a couple of items. One is the star-studded international cast that you put together, including, of course, Harvey Keitel, Lior Ashkenazi, Shir Haas, Mark Evanier, and there are even some other incredible um, actors that you've put together. Can you tell us a little bit about what the casting process was like and also on set, what was the what was your experience of working with such an all-star group? Look, it was a, a different experience, I must tell you. Uh, a, a difficult experience because uh, it was my first English uh, speaking film. And uh, uh, I am an actor's director. I, I work very closely to the actors. I work very closely to to psychology, to you know, very thin, thin elements, um, uh, and uh, so English language. In the same time, it helping, you know, because you know, uh, Israeli part didn't speak uh, real English. Mark Vanier, of course, was was good. Harry Keitel didn't speak Hebrew. Uh, um, Russian actors like Yulia Perifield, this wonderful uh, blonde, um, she's one of the most well-known actors in, the, in Russia now. She didn't speak no English, no Hebrew. So I have I had to connect all this. At the same time, at the same time, it was very creative experience and. Uh, uh, I think it was very interesting and, and for Harvey Keitel and for everybody to play this. It's the first time uh, Keitel played uh, uh, his ancestors, you know, because he's a guy from Brooklyn. He's a, he's a guy, uh, a Jewish uh, uh, young boy uh, from, from, from Brooklyn. At the same time, I don't know. I don't know. Look, it's it was it was tough. It was very hot. It was in Israel. It was hot, and it was mm, it took a, a lot of energy. Okay, fair enough. Um, before again getting into the plot, I wanted to talk a little bit about your artistic approach. Um, it's a very vivid film in a lot of ways. The cinematography the lensing, the score, all of which you've chosen are, are quite striking. Um, there's almost a nostalgia, technicolor-like, very bright past, and then the more muted, quiet uh, tones for the present day. Um, can you talk a little bit about the stylistic elements, how you arrived at these choices, uh, both in terms of visual and perhaps some of the uh, music as well? Uh, uh, first of all, about, uh, 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 you know, all, all the novel of, of Mir Shalev is based on flash, flashbacks. And this flashbacks, you know, uh, in the literature, how, how can I tell you? Uh, in general, you know, literature is much more thin, is much more spiritual than, the, than a, a movie. Even the most, uh, uh, you cannot, uh, the poetry of a movie is not the same as the poetry of the literature. Because the poetry of a movie is that uh, you don't lie, that the face is, is real, hand is real, uh, relation between people are real. And uh, I, was unable to put all the novel of Meir Shalev in one film because she had some fantastic uh, t trip, something very unreal like um, like Gabriel Garcia Marquez, you know, he, he made some, and 
to the film, it's impossible. Uh, so uh, I had to, div to divide uh, the very bright past, full of love and full of human shit, full of, full of, full of humanity in, in, in general. And uh, uh, the present life of a soul on, on everybody, because you know, uh, it's a bit a, a, a film about, and the book also about exile. A soul on the biblic fable is, uh, although the biblic fail is uh, somebody who left Israel and even the name itself is never mentioned in Israel. Uh, Mayor Shalev told me that it's impossible that a Jewish family can call uh, his son a sow. A sow is an alien, somebody who is from, um, from other side, somebody who uh, who is gone and so and uh, what is to be Jew? You know, we understand now what is to be Jew in Israel, for example. You know, a country, a normal. But what is what what it means to be Jew to uh, when you are living in Russia or in the United States or in France? You know, why? Um, what makes you a little bit different? Uh, it uh, he showed it uh, very good in the in the, in the person of a soul, of uh, the artist, of, uh, uh, of, of the writer, uh, it's his role, and who is beautifully performed by Leo Ashkenazi. Very good, very uh, wonderful, one, one of the best uh, Israeli actors, perhaps the best now. And I think that I recognize myself in this character of Leo Ashkenazi, uh, and I wanted to show that he can begin to write when he is back in uh, on his, in his homeland. Uh, suddenly, uh, he discovers that he can write about himself. That he can write about he. Um, he he discover his gift and his freedom. Thank you. I'm going to start incorporating some of the questions from the audience. I will try to get to many of these. Um, we have a few sort of clarification questions. Uh, the first comes from an anonymous uh, asker says, where was Isaac that dad was Abraham? You know, it, it, I, was, I was nailed to the story of Meir Shalev. Meir Shalev, is, he, he likes a lot uh, Paradoxes, you know, he uh, he just uh, mixed everything. He made the father Abraham, who is not <laughs> absolute, who is not Isaac, as you know. And uh, uh, if you remember, uh, 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 Esau was a warrior. He was a hunter. He was big. He was. Uh, some kind of a uh, muscular idiot, you know, and his, and his uh, brother was uh, was some uh, somebody intelligent and fine and um, uh, poetical and understanding. So uh, 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 Mir Sharif mixed everything, and um, there in this point I was uh, close to Sharif. Perhaps he wanted to show. It's very, it's a, I don't know his interpretation. He's just smiling uh, and doesn't explain anything. Uh, I wanted it like this. So uh, I think that perhaps he wanted to show that is the beginning of this Jewish nation. I don't know. Uh, you have to take it like I took it. It's not Isaac, it's Abraham, and it's Sarah, and Sarah is Russian, you know, and perhaps everything is some kind of mistake because uh, because uh, if Sarah was not Jewish but Russian and uh, everything is mixed up and everybody changed places. Uh, it's, what is interesting is that Mayor Shalev, he, he has Russian blood in his, uh, his mother, or grandmother, I think his mother was a Russian immigrant. 
Um, so another question relatedly, Eva asks, um, she says she doesn't, she has not read the book, so she doesn't know how Abraham was characterized in the book, um, but she wants to know in the film and perhaps in the book, why was Abraham such a despicable, abusive husband and father? What drove him to be such a difficult man? She's burned by, she's, she's burned by his, by his oven, <laughs> he told it. You know, it's a, it's a guy. You know, it's a guy uh, that I understand uh, quite quite well. It's a guy who who is always arguing with God. You know, always have a conflict with God because why why you are so mean to me? Why? Uh, why I'm good, I'm doing, I, I, I'm in love with my wife. Why she doesn't love me? Why should I, why, why am I, uh, why I have to work every night and people around me, you know, some, somebody who is always try to find a, a justice. And I cannot say that, you know, he's hateable from time to time. And at the same time, we find that he has a lot of sufferance in him. He suffers a lot, and he's in some way a very honest man. And, uh, uh, you know, I think that Mayor Chalet wanted to show it with when he cut his uh, finger. It means like something like sacrifice. You know, he, he paid for this love. At the same time, I don't know why uh, beautiful women uh, doesn't like poets and artists, you know, and uh, finally they always uh, going with a real man, with men who, are, uh, who has this real days. Uh, and uh, a poet, you know, like Asaf, he was, of course, a poet, I speak about young Asaf, and he, you know, it's always tomorrow, tomorrow, and something, and waiting, I don't know what. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, conception of the kind of the masculine man and that's hardened by life. Um, yes, you know, so, you yeah. know, yeah, somebody somebody can can uh, can go to uh, close to fascism, you know, to fascism because uh, you know the struggle, communism, socialism. It's all the the, the feelings of this man who was injured by the life. Uh, uh, no justice. Give me justice. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question here from Sherry. She asks, was the name Esav ever mentioned throughout the film? She noted that Jacob was referred to many times, but she didn't remember Esav being in the film as a name. Yes. I, I told that Esav is never mentioned. Uh, and uh, Mir Shalev asked me not to mention Esav. Esav is some kind of like author name, the novel was named Esau, and um, um, it's like she has no name. Okay. Uh, Naomi asks about Leah. She says, what happened to her? Did she live happily until her son died? What? So, sorry, one more time. Uh, we have a, somebody okay. asked about Leah, Leah. Uh, yeah. did, she leave, uh, did she live happily until her son died? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it was some kind of sacrifice or some kind of impossibility. Uh, you know, it's it's a little bit like Greek uh, t t t t tragedy. In Greek tragedy, everybody knows that uh, he will do something and he will die. And at the same time, he made the step, uh, and she and she was she was making this step because she understood that the saw is some, it's, it was impossible to live with a saw. He was too ephemer, if you know, I don't know. Uh, it's a French word, ephemer. It existed, it, it existed in English. Ephemer. Lily, is it ephemeral or something different? Ephemeral. You know, no. you know uh, ephemeral, it's like uh, a papillon, papillon, you know. It's like a butterfly. Yes. Yeah, hard, hard to capture or fully imagine. Um, 
going away from the plot for a second, uh, and you've mentioned this a little bit in your introduction, but I, I'd love to get slightly deeper. One of the central themes of the film and the book is really about the nature, the core of what Jewish identity is. What does it mean to be Jewish? Um, and what I'd like to know is a little bit, what did you personally learn about Judaism and its meaning through the course of making the movie? Oh, difficult to, difficult. It's a tough question. I don't, it's, it's very tough. It's very tough question. It's a, it's a good question for a psychoanalyst, you know. <laughs> uh, I'd like to lie on the call <laughs> uh, in the big armchair and uh, try to answer you. Uh, but I felt, of course, I felt Israel like uh, a very close society to me. At the same time, very different. Uh, there is no explanation. You know, as there is no explanation about the nature of antisemitism. In reality, there is no. There are a lot of uh, scientists who explain, who are explaining and explaining, explaining the nature of antisemitism. But at the same time, there is no explanation. Uh, of antisemitism. And there's no explanation with why you are feeling yourself uh, a little bit special, but not totally special. I don't know. Look, uh, it's some mystical feeling. If uh, our uh, spectators feel it, uh, good. Uh, no, no, I, I cannot explain it. But suddenly, you know, you discover that for, for me, uh, it's so easy. It's so uh, that I understand Harvey Keitel Harry tell uh, perfectly, you know, and as as if we had the same childhood, and it's not the truth. We didn't have the same childhood, and this um, sudden discovery of brotherhood, it's um, it's important. Uh, I I have to, to tell you that Harry Tell was my dream for a long time, uh, and uh, I was absolutely happy to work with him and. Uh, he taught me a lot because he's so profoundly inside the role. He's so really, the, the world around him doesn't exist for him. He's uh, absolutely inside, yes. It's, it's, and that, that's a, a very credible way to act is uh, to have that narrow focus that's only internal. Yeah, but, uh, and I, I've never seen, you know, perhaps it is the difference between uh, good actors and not so good actors, uh, how profound you can you can get inside, you know. So uh, you mentioned earlier that this was uh, your first film in English. Can you talk a little bit about the decision? Why did you feel like this had to be done in English and what advantages and what challenges did that present? Um, you talked about some of the challenges already, but perhaps why, why the decision? Well, for me, you know, I thought that English is some kind of Esperanto now. <laughs> Perhaps it was my mistake, but I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, in, uh, in all these uh, science fiction films, we are not, uh, uh, we understand that, Alien can speak English and a Mercian can speak English. For, for me, it was some kind of Esperanto because I, I really did want to do this film. And um, in, in Hebrew, I couldn't do it, you know. I don't know, you touch my, my weak point. At the same time, I wanted to make a film that can be seen and understood by everybody. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Some uh, kind of challenge. It's some kind of challenge. Um, so Ila Mike Wexler commented that uh, parts of the film were, uh, were a bit fragmented. Um, and I'd like to turn this into a bit of a question. There's so much in this film in terms of the, it's sweeping, it's epic, it's over so many years and generations and characters and storylines. What was your approach to making it accessible for the viewer and not overstuffed, not too fragmented? It's a huge challenge. Uh, how did you approach that challenge? I lost, I think. Uh, 
<laughs> Not really, because I, I had I had uh, rushes for three hour fields, but I understood quite well that it's impossible now uh, in our situation to make uh, a film three hours longer. And uh, there in, in three hours in film, uh, in three, um, I explained a lot that was not explained there. And you, you have to to jump a little bit, man. You know, uh, I'm telling you that a big literature, big literature, it's very, very, very subtle things, and. Uh, um, There, there, there were always, and uh, you always have to put on, on the, the, the subject, the plot, the plot, the action is what is driving um, the film. So I had to take all the elements that, uh, that make the action go further and further. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sorry. I I begin. Uh, I became. I became wicked. My English is failing. Huh? Peut-être, peut-être je vais répondre, Lily. Peut-être je vais répondre en français. Maybe I am going to answer this question in French. Elise. Uh, je voulais dire que. Uh, je voulais dire que. Um, Uh, la littérature, elle est beaucoup plus fine et beaucoup plus compliquée. I wanted to say that literature is so, there's so much more fineness in literature, and literature is so much more complex. And uh, jamais vous ne pouvez pas faire une, un bon film sur uh, guerre et paix, par exemple. So. Well, you can never reflect in a movie exactly the same finesse, for example, like Garrett Peer. Uh, yes, peace and war. Yeah, war, like war, war, war. War, war and peace. Yeah, war and war peace. And peace. Mm -hmm. Or, or uh, brother Karamazov by Dostoevsky. You always, you always be fragmented uh, in the movie. So, uh, alors j'ai j'ai essayé uh, de faire tout de même une histoire plus ou moins cohérente. So, what I tried to do was to come up with a coherent story. Peut-être j'avais trop de respect pour le roman. Maybe I had too much respect for the book itself. Because I like it. Good. So talking about uh, the, the plot in terms of some of the themes, um, in addition to some of the aspects we've covered around Jewish identity and around the biblical story, uh, there were some themes in the film that were very current and timely. Um, and here I'm talking about immigration and assimilation and, and the notion of home. Um, and I'm wondering, as someone that's a, somewhat of an expatriate yourself, you divide your time between France and, and Russia, where you were born, or the USSR, how critical and how personal were those aspects to you um, in terms of uh, being from an outside and creating home um, or assimilation or immigration? Any of those themes uh, particularly critical or resonate with you in terms of picking the material? Uh, Excusez-moi, Lily, j'ai pas tout compris. Excuse me, I didn't understand everything in the question, so I'm going to um, um, uh, interpret the question into French. Uh -huh. uh, bon, en plus d'évoquer les euh, fils prodigues qui retournent chez soi à la maison, euh, 
en plus de l'amour à long terme, de la compétition fraternelle, vous avez aussi exploré des sujets qui sont très opportuns et qui sont très actuels dans ce film concernant l'immigration, l'assimilation et même la notion de foyer, le « chez soi ». Um, vous, en tant qu'expatrié, euh, quelqu'un qui partage euh, son temps entre la France et entre son pays natal, qui est la Russie, um, et comment est-ce que, bon, quelle importance est-ce que vous avez été vous-même à ces aspects de ce film oh, Une très bonne question. That's a very good question. Peut-être parce que c'est une grande question, je ne sais pas, je n'ai pas de réponse parce que tout de même, je suis chez moi quand je suis à, à, à Moscou, même si j'ai des grands problèmes avec la vie à Moscou, avec, euh, avec les tensions de Moscou. You know, it's a huge question. It's actually a question uh, which I cannot answer. You know, when I'm in Moscow, I feel at home in Moscow, even though I do not really like all aspects of life in Moscow and I feel the tensions over there, I still nevertheless feel at home. And uh, et, uh, alors c'est et en même temps, je suis à la maison seulement ici, dans la maison où je suis né. Je suis mais, maintenant au Moscou. On the other hand, I only feel home in the house, in the house where I was born, in Moscow. En même temps, j'étais très bien accueilli en France. Ils m'ont donné la nationalité et des ordres. Uh, But on the other hand, I was warmly welcomed in France. They gave me the French nationality. I received all different types of, uh, of, of, of awards and medals. Yes, and... Uh, uh, c'est notre sort, vous savez, c'est notre sort. You know, it's our fate. It's, it's, it's Jewish fate to... Uh, de voler comme... <laughs> Autour du, autour du monde. To fly all around the world. Peut-être peut que j'ai fait ce film parce que euh, j'avais cette grande question. Euh, Est-ce que je dois quitter la Russie? Est-ce que je dois aller vivre en Israël? Je ne pouvais pas le résoudre. Est-ce que je dois aller vivre en France? Peut-être c'est mm, tous ces question qui euh, n'était pas claire pour moi-même m'ont euh, bon, poussé à faire ce film. Well, maybe that was the very reason why in myself I felt pushed to making this particular movie because all of this question, you know, shall I leave Russia? Shall I go to Israel? Uh, now that I'm in France, um, so torn between uh, these countries, but also torn inside of myself. And maybe that made me make this movie. It's an interesting concept, uh, especially I like that you mention um, uh, for, for Jews often uh, the homeland is fleeting, that it's more of a internal identity and not necessarily tied to a physical place unless perhaps that place is Israel. And so you might move around and feel partially at home in one place or another, but not necessarily fully at home anywhere um, outside, as you say, of your own house <laughs> in Moscow. Um, so I, I think we're, we're getting close to wrapping. If anyone has additional questions, now is a great time to throw them in the q and I think I believe I've gotten to um, all of the audience questions. If I have not, feel free to re-enter your question um, right now. Uh, Pavel, in the meantime, I'd love to ask you what's next. Uh, what projects are next for you and also what's next for this film? I know it's just begun streaming in the United States. Um, uh, what projects are you taking on next after this? Look, I don't know. I am, I am, uh, you know, a director, 
un réalisateur, c'est euh, quelqu'un qui, comme un loup, toujours court pour chercher plusieurs projets. You know, um, I don't know, but as a film director, you're always somebody who is just chasing new projects all the time with hunting. Yes, and uh, uh, je travaille, uh, je travaille sur uh, une série consacrée au goulag. Uh, uh, basé sur, sur, sur un livre documentaire de, de Evgenia Ginsburg. So, and I'm working on a series, and this series is all about the Gulag. It's based on a book by, the interpreter can't pronounce the name. Evgenia Ginsburg, it's not important. It yeah. was a testimony, yes. It was a, a, a documentary book. Evgenia Ginsburg. Yes. Okay. And I want, yes. And I, I made it will be eight, eight, uh, eight film serial, eight, mm -hmm. eight episodes. So it's a series with eight episodes. Uh, j'ai encore, je vais faire encore une, une course de fait. J'ai, j'ai, j'ai quelques uh, projets, mais maintenant, pendant la pandémie, je ne sais pas comment ça va se réaliser. You know, I'm working on other projects. I have several projects um, I would like to work more on, but now with the pandemic, it's hard to find a way uh, to work on those. I'm curious, actually, on that last point, um, and this is not particular to Isav, but really uh, being a filmmaker in the current context during the pandemic, what is your take about how audiences interact with a film only through the computer screen or on their TV as opposed to in the theater? Uh, do you think it will continue? Do you think it's all negative or is there some positive to it as well? It's very sad. It's, uh, it's very sad because you, you worked a lot on the... Nous avons beaucoup travaillé sur l'image de ce film et c'est très dommage de le voir seulement sur les écrans de ordinateur. You know, it's very sad because we put so much effort into uh, the the pictures of this movie, into the light and everything which goes into it. And now it's really sad to see people being forced to watch it on a computer screen. Okay, well, hopefully for all of us, uh, this is only a short term uh, blip and, and we can all be back in theaters and watching things as intended on the large screen after. No, because there is a mystery, some kind of a banalization of the mystery of the cinema. You know, cinema is mystical. You have to go somewhere in dark, in dark uh, audience you are alone and not alone with, you know, uh, and you have a, a big screen and they, everything is very uh, vulgar and banal. You see, you are with your coffee or with your tea or with your beer just in front of TV and uh, and you know, because of this, if you are doing a TV show, you have to put every Time more and more and more because you have to catch the eyes of the spectator and you have to be even more and perhaps make this make the episodes shorter and shorter and to, and to put more and more inside I don't know where je ne sais pas où ça va nous amener I do not know where all this is going to lead us to mais en même temps la culture est faite comme ça que Uh, l'humanité ne refuse rien. But you know, at the same time, um, culture is in a way that humanity is never going to refuse anything. On pensait que uh, le cinéma va tuer le théâtre, que la télé va tuer le cinéma, et rien n'est tué. Le théâtre existe, le cinéma existe, la télé existe. Internet aussi, il ne va rien tuer. You know, um, in the beginning, we said, well, 
uh, the movie theater is going to kill the theater. Television is going to kill movie theaters. And now we're talking like the internet is going to kill the movies. But in the end, all of these different uh, ways of watching movies are going to survive. I, I agree and, and hope that that is the case. As someone who, in addition to a festival, operates a cinema, uh, I, I share entirely your, your belief that the magic of the cinema, if not entirely cut off or squelched, is definitely minimized when it's on a screen. Uh, there's so much that cannot be experienced when, as you say, you have the beer and it's only part of your attention is paid there. And actually so much, I think, of the magic of cinema is in the nuance. It's in the lighting. It's in the shadow. It's in the barely perceptible movement of an eye. Uh, these things that are subtle um, that I think you can experience when it's on a 30, 40, 50 foot screen and when it's, you know, across the way in your living room are perhaps lost um, so I, I certainly hope uh, as with you, uh, but I also share your feeling that it's, it's not over and cinema's death has been proclaimed so many times um, for a variety of reasons. And I think this will be yet another hurdle and an obstacle that while serious, we can get over uh, with time. While we've been chatting, I have a, uh, another question, um, a, a little bit more of a personal nature um, from Eva asks, um, if you could talk a little bit about the experience of when you won for Taxi Blues at uh, the Cannes Film Festival, uh, how that changed you as an artist and as a person, what that led to in your career, uh, what oh, did that please, do for you? Please, please, someday I will write a book about uh, about this. I, I cannot, I'm sorry, I cannot just, because first of all, I told already uh, this tale uh, so many times that uh, I don't know myself already what is, I, what I invented that it was uh, truth. In uh, the same time, um, you know, it's, it's big and complicated question because I became suddenly famous in one day. It was very, very strange. And I was already 40, 40, and I was sure that my life is uh, finished. And suddenly, you know, it was just like a strange fairy tale. And only after I had to pay a lot of this, the speed of, you know, this, the speed of becoming well known. It's, it's very special story. But at the same time, it's wonderful. I wish you to do the same. One step jump. Great. Okay. I think we're, we're nearing here the end. I want to thank uh, Pavel. Thank you so much for the film. If anyone hasn't caught it again, you can see it at our festival through Thursday at jxjdc.org. Tell your friends. Thank you, Lily Ohm, for the interpretation. Thank you, all of us, for joining us this afternoon or wherever you are evening. Uh, Pavel? Uh, thank you, Lily. Thank you, Ilya. Yes. Thank you, everybody. It was very nice. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for very having much. me. Yes, have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye.